shining path, the path, in fact, of attempted revolution. The organization grew into the guerrilla group at the center of the extreme violence in Peru in the last 20 years of the last century. It was founded in the late 60s by Abimel Guzman, a professor of philosophy. His ideas quickly overran his university in the southern city of Ayacucho, where students became indoctrinated, adopting the shining path's radical ideology. And as the country tried to hold elections in 1980, it turned to sabotage, burning ballot boxes, and it slowly morphed from an ideological struggle into an armed guerrilla group. It began taking on the army in an increasingly violent struggle, the Shining Path managing to take control of several rural areas of Peru and even some shanty towns in the capital, Lima itself. Over the next 20 years, nearly 70,000 people lost their lives or disappeared in the struggle. And in 1992, Abigail Guzman was captured, shown off to journalists in a cage. Presidente del Comité Central, Buró Político y Comité Permanente de Sendero Luminoso, Silva y Berenice Reynoso. Siga soñando. Es simplemente un recodo, nada más. Un recodo en el camino. Well, rudderless, the guerrilla group imploded, breaking up into small local movements. Some former members became drug traffickers and even today control a few areas of the country. The Shining Path still placed on the official list of terrorist organizations by the United States and the European Union. In Lima itself now, though, the organization trying to reinvent itself as a solely political movement. Well, Antoine Bodiat, Luis Romero and Fernando Lucena revisit the Shining Path for France 24. Perched among the Andean mountains, the village of Lucanamaca is emblematic of the violence suffered under the Shining Path. It was here that, in 1983, the Peruvian guerrilla army perpetrated its first massacre, slaughtering 69 people. The killing began here on the 3rd of April. They were hitting people with axes and machetes in cold blood. The place was entirely covered in blood. Still today, I remember that. At the time, Guelberto was town mayor. He almost died too that day. Then they fired a bullet at me, here, and it went out here. They could have killed me, but God saved me. A monument erected on the town square in 2007 lists the victims' names. There are so many names and they're all fading. Nobody remembers. Abel Alhauman, Catalina Kicha, she was pregnant. She was also killed. I can't believe it's all fading. The war caused by the Shining Path led to the death or disappearance of close to 70,000 people, victims of the Maoist guerrilla group or army reprisals. 25 years after the end of the Civil War, the memory of that time is fading, even though many families still hope to find the remains of their loved ones who disappeared. We're on our way to collect the bones of eight people murdered in 1984 by alleged members of the Shining Path. Recovering the remains of the missing is precisely the job of Ayacucho Region's deputy prosecutor. Today, he's in Paraya Pampa a village where 20 civilians were killed on January 17, 1984. <laughs> the forensics team has already begun the excavations. They find the first corpse buried six feet under. Here there are three of them. My father, Mario Mendez, and Aurelio Mendez. Gerardo Capodiez and his team exhumed the remains delicately. Everything is documented and indexed. Yes, the skull first. 
Take a photo here, Angie. Several people from the village have come to watch the excavation. Irene hopes the remains of her husband's cousin will be discovered. Those of her husband, killed in another massacre in the jungle, have yet to be found. The army came and 30 people were killed. My second husband also died. We had a little boy. He still asks me, where's daddy? I'm sad. I'm so sad for my child. Sometimes he cries, and to see my son weep leaves me so sad. Some 15,000 people who disappeared during the Civil War still haven't been found. The bodies exhumed at Paria Pampa will soon be identified. Gerardo has just arrived at the forensics lab in the regional capital. His team could only fully extract five bodies. It was too difficult to exhume the rest. Another excavation needs to be organized. It's good work. We've reached our target. The mission was a success. It's satisfying because it's usually almost impossible to find bodies buried so deep. It's good. The main thing is that the people are happy. Rolando Alvarado heads the region's forensics team, which was created in 2003 and specializes in identifying the bodies of those who perished in the war. He uses DNA analysis to try to link names with the bodies torn from the earth. The body doesn't say much to you, but to me it says many things, how it was killed, its age, its height. All these clues on top of the clothes, which are very important, we cross-reference with information obtained by the archaeologist and the social anthropologist. Over the past 15 years, his team has analyzed 3,500 bodies and identified almost 2,000 of them. In 2016, the Peruvian authorities enacted a new law on the search for persons who went missing during the war. The government's decision to confront the country's painful past was done in the hope that, by returning the victims' bodies to their families, it would bring social peace. Funeral services are regularly organized for the communities of Ayacucho, the region that has been most affected by the conflict. Felix Hilera and his two children will finally see the body of their wife and mother, Maria, who was killed 30 years ago by the Shining Path. Nine bags in a package. One by one, the bones and clothes are transferred into the open coffin. We're going to close it, then we'll pray with all the families. Thank you, doctor. Are you Catholic, my brothers? Then we'll all pray together. We'll ask God, the God of life, that he receive those close to us who have perished and who have died in many different circumstances. Everyone together. The ceremonies offer a moment of recollection for the families, but they also provide an occasion for the Peruvian authorities to recognize the errors of their past. 
The Peruvian government asks for your forgiveness. Forgive the state's inaction at the time for not having protected the rights of your loved ones. We ask you to forgive because the government at the time did not look after you, did not provide the support and protection you needed. Maria Moreno Malqui, rest in peace, my love. Now I can look at her. To my family, I can only say these words. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Tonight, Maria's loved ones will hold a vigil over her body before placing her in her grave. Felix and his children can finally grieve. But the deadly history of the Shining Path is far from over. The group's remaining soldiers have abandoned their political ideals and now dedicate themselves to trafficking drugs. Anti-drug forces in the Varame region are still in violent conflict with former members of the Shining Path. We lost three men this year in a narco-terrorist ambush. After that, we suffered another attack that left a number of us wounded. But this is our daily bread, the routine. These delinquent terrorists can harass us or ambush us at any given moment. Rajan Palma and his 30 men struggle to advance through the jungle, beaten by the pouring rain. Here it is, that's our objective. That's the objective. They reach a small clandestine cocaine lab, capable of producing 22 kilos of cocaine paste each week, at a market value of 15,000 euros. These remnants of the Shining Path guerrilla show that they are still active in this zone. They traffic drugs and provide the drug trade with protection and security. Improvised explosive devices are set to destroy the lab and its drug production. Okay, let's get out of here. <clears throat> Go ahead, muñeco. Roger that. Give us the countdown. One minute. 30 seconds. In the proven capital, 800 kilometers from Vrem, the Shining Path is also in the news. Former members of the guerrilla group, some of them just out of prison, have created a political group called MOVDEF, or the Movement for General Amnesty and Fundamental Rights. The group has been highly controversial. Alfredo Crespo is a member. I'm the undersecretary for Movadef. They're persecuting us, putting us on trial. They're detaining members of our group who have committed no acts of terrorism. They reject us for ideological reasons because we're Marxist, Leninist, Maoists. Alfredo Crespo and three other members of Movadef are on trial for glorifying terrorism. They face 12 years in prison. A second trial should open soon against other members of the group who are accused of being financed through the drug trade. Alfredo Crespo hopes to prove that Movdef is harmless. Hello. A handful of militants of the 3,500 that the movement claims show up for a fundraising campaign. Hello, how are you? 
They've gone as far as to say that we're being supported by the drug trade, but that's totally false. What you can see today, that's what we do. That's how we support ourselves. About 30 portions of grilled meat have been sold for a total of 100 euros. It's very little for a fundraiser. The ongoing trials are weakening Movdef, which will be hard-pressed to survive if its leaders are convicted. Twenty-five years after the end of Peru's brutal civil war, the shining path and its hairs may finally be dying out. The Tower of Hope in Lima, built from the electrical towers, the shining path blew up in order to rob the capital of its power and light, overlooks the coast. It remains a permanent memorial to the darker days of Peru's past. Antoine Badiard, Luis Romero and Fernando Liceno revisiting the shining path of France 24. Well, that's all from this week's edition. Of course, you can catch it again and all the previous editions as well on our website at france24.com. More news coming up in a few moments' time. Do stay with us.